Welcome, I'm Joshua Delisle, the designer maker. This here is ACMA. Nope, I've never heard of them either. However, these guys have joined the race to try to become the supreme leaders within the desktop laser cutting industry. And are making bold claims that this will cut 30 mil thick wood and 40 mil thick acrylic. So for $1,200, let's see what we're getting. This is a 30 watt module with a wavelength of 450 nanometers. It's built in air assist as standard. It's got a built in height gauge arm and a singular locking nut for height adjustment. The y-axis is on linear bearings. The maximum X travel is 420 millimeters. And the maximum Y travel is 400 millimeters. The air assist is tethered to the machine and can be switched on and off using code within Lightburn. The air assist is 25 liters per minute and 34 decibels. It has a built-in emergency stop button, a key switch, and a tilt and fire alarm. The whole system runs off just one 24 volt six amp plug. From what I can see so far, the quality is fantastic. So I can confirm this machine can be controlled either by a phone or a pad and this is what 24,000 millimeters per minute looks like. Operating noise level is roughly 70 decibels however we'll run some proper tests using light burn on the laptop. Before we get started Agma realized that the open systems are very dangerous so they've also provided an enclosure. The enclosure comes with ducting and an extraction fan. The enclosure is a steel frame with a fire retardant cover. Let me quickly assemble this. So the frame's really simple to put together with push lock connectors. So with the cover now on, we now have a floor plan of 700 millimeters or 28 inches square with a height of 360 millimeters or 14 inches. The cover can actually be completely sealed via a flap and as windows so you can see the operation without hurting your eyes. The extractor fan is powered via USB and is extracting air at four meters per second. An enclosed system like this is comparable to a much more expensive CO2 laser. And so I'll compare the results to my Gui Cloud 50 watt CO2 laser. These are priced at three grand. I've also been given a rotary Y axis. If you're pleased with this kit so far as I am, you'll be glad to know that you can win this for just five pounds. I'm raffling all of my lasers and 3D printers. Either way, this is the one you'll be receiving. And so I'll pack this as best as I can for you. Find a link to the raffle in the description and any discounts on this machine. So for you your viewing pleasure, I've packed away the cover. I'm going to rely solely on the glasses that they provided. So on the Lightburn software, I quickly found the device by clicking devices, then clicking find my laser. I've already found mine, but yours will come up on the device information here and just click add device. I labeled mine ACMA. So to run a test, we're going to go on laser tools and then material test. We're going to do a cut test between 200 millimeters per minute and 1000 millimeters per minute and from 60 to 100% power. So for this test, we're using nine millimeter hardwood ply as we've used in previous episodes. Well, the results look promising so far and that was very quick. At 200 millimeters per minute through nine millimeter hardwood ply, we're getting through at 70% power. The cut looks really clean as well. So these squares were cut at 10 mil thick and these have come out at 9.68 by 9.8 millimeters. Now this machine seems to love it at 200 millimeters per minute, but let's see if we can go in between 200 and 400 and see where the limit is. Let's check those results. So we've got 100% cut through of one pass up to 250 millimeters per minute. Looking at the reverse, 300 millimeters per minute isn't far off. Right, let's cut through this 30 mil piece of wood. So it's 29.6. Now specifically, this is actually polonia wood. This wood grows incredibly fast and between rings, it was a record of 80 millimeters. What's also interesting is it's very affordable to buy. I've put links in the description of larger boards. Polonia is native to China, but can be grown in the UK. So I'm also gonna test the cutting ability on pallet wood which has a much tighter grain and the natural resins will prove it more difficult to cut. I like to use recycled wood so I found this 11 layered plywood. I don't know how well this will cut but the laser glue might prove a problem and so it'll be interesting to see. All right let's begin the first test.
<laughs> okay, so the first cut didn't work so well. It did pierce all the way through. What's really unfortunate is from the heat from the flame, the glass is now cracked. I'll see if I can get a replacement for that. I was trying to cut out a letter. Instead, let's just sever a line all the way across. So that was cut using the recommended settings and it has gone all the way through. But I think we need more passes that are a lot faster so we don't end up catching it on fire. All right, let's see how that's done. It's nearly gone all the way through. Wow. So we'll say a couple of more passes and we probably would have gotten there. Look how clean that cut is. So that was actually 20 passes at 2000 millimeters per minute. All right, so next I want to try this 19 millimeter thick pallet wood. So I think I found the right setting. That was 10 passes at 500 millimeters per minute. Let's now see if we can actually cut something out then. Well, I would say for a diode laser, that is very impressive still. The engraving was at 24,000 millimeters per minute, and that is a very consistent cut, I might say. Right, is that work then? I call that a kind of. Not quite gone all the way through, and the burning is awful. So we've pushed this laser to the limits on wood and it's probably one of the best performing lasers we've had so far. I'll compare the results of the CO2 laser, but first let's have a go at 40 mil thick acrylic. And as a bonus, my son has asked me if I would make him a suit of armor. Naturally, I said yes. My long-term subscribers know that I design a bit for metalworking and the patterns for making stuff like this are available on my Etsy shop. So I've got an idea how to make some Celtic armor. So this is measuring 40.9. And this obviously black acrylic, a diode laser won't touch the clear stuff, it has to be opaque. Let's try cutting off a sliver to start with. Right, nine passes, 100 millimeters per minute, and I'd say that was about 80% through it. Now you can see there's a bit of warping, so I'm wondering if the material is actually bending into the cut. All right, I'm gonna try again with a thicker cut. I was hoping to leave some material to make something. Now let's take a look at that. If I turn it around, Way, look at that. Now the main reason that this is so impressive is that that laser beam has been able to focus dead straight for over 40 millimeters. I've not seen that in the laser, not even a CO2 laser. My CO2 laser can cut a lot faster, but nowhere near that thickness. So I've been racking my brains on something practical to make with this bit of acrylic. And I think I've got just the thing. Okay, let's see if this works then. I've done way too many passes, so I'll finish it now. Oh, it probably could have done with a couple of more, actually. Wow, look at that. <laughs> that is quite impressive. So that's moving at 100 millimeters per minute, 100% power, and took approximately 25 minutes. So what's it for? Let me finish it and show you. So this camera, by the way, is the Aegis PT by Reolink. It's a 360 degree outdoor camera that's completely wireless and off-grid. I'm using mine to check up on my chickens, but I can also pan it round to see what the kids are getting up to. I've put a link to this camera and any special deals in the description. Here's my wife picking elderflowers. We're making elderflower champagne. Very yummy. And so's the champagne. The reason I thought acrylic would be good as a bracket is because it's the best plastic to be using outdoors. It has the very best UV protection. Although, it can be quite brittle, so we'll have to watch it in winter months. Right then, let's cut some stainless steel and make a bit of armour. 
Right, we've got some very interesting results on this test piece. Both of these circles were etched at 24,000 millimeters per minute, or at least that was the setting. This one's darker because it's on offset fill mode, which means it actually spirals around. Well, so this circle here is left to right just constantly until it filled up the whole length. This circle's at 20,000 millimeters per minute. This one's at 15,000 millimeters per minute. And this really dark one is at 3,000 millimeters per minute. Now there's some wobbly bits on this JD here. This was at 24,000 millimeters per minute again. But I think the speed is just a little bit too much for it, which is why it's shaking. So that is very promising. I've never seen a laser etch that fast on a machine like this before. However, we need to address one issue with stainless steel and that is how it warps. So in the past I've tried many options from bolting it down to clamping it down using magnets. This time I'm going to try TIG welding it. It's obviously helpful to have a steel table to work on. So there we are, a series of tacks and actually flatten them down with a hammer as well. What happens is by doing opposite sides, as the weld cools down, it contracts. So it's pulled this nice and taut, so it shouldn't warp at all. So I had this image created using AI, which is extremely fun to do. And I've put a link to the website that I used in the description. But on Lightburn, if you right click any image and then go down to trace image, you can create a laser cut path that's traced around all the shapes and gave me this. And pro tip, I can now save this is a DXF and then have a professional laser cutting company cut this out of steel for me. Alternatively, I can actually use Lightburn to control my CNC plasma table because it has both pierce and lead in settings. So I've saved this to offset fill and will only take 25 minutes. That's at 24,000 millimeters per minute. If we went at 3,000 millimeters per minute at normal fill, it takes nearly an hour. I'm going to align the laser manually using the frame tool. All right, we're set ready, let's etch. Wow, look at that. Got some really nice temper colors coming through now. I'm gonna see if I can run the file again, but this time just doing the outline, see if we can get some definition on these edges. We've got a very slight misalignment, but it has definitely made it all pop. Let me get it off and see what it looks like. So there we go. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit him. I've just tried it on him. And he's telling me he wants Stormtrooper armor, but I'm trying to convince him to go for Gothic instead. So let's be critical and give my honest opinion of this laser. So do I have anything negative to say about this? Well, it would seem that all the negatives that I had in previous videos have been addressed with this machine. Even the fire safety alarm has an on and off switch. Otherwise in natural daylight, it can trigger the alarm ruining your edge. One thing I'll point out is on mine, the isolation key is come loose. So all I'd need to do is take this back panel off and re-tighten it. We haven't used the road table but that simply plugs in here and then flick of a switch we can go into rotating mode. So what about comparing this to a CO2 laser? We can't etch stainless steel with a CO2 laser. That can only be done via a diode laser or a fiber laser. However the CO2 can cut clear acrylic. Now my CO2 can run at 36,000 millimeters per minute so this is 24,000 still an upgrade from the one we had previously. But for most cutting operations you actually want to go at the slower speeds anyway. However those fast Faster speeds are excellent for engraving. Personally, if you're spending over a grand, then it should be for commercial use. However, that entirely depends on the product that you want to make. What I like about these open gantry systems is we can have a big board and place this anywhere. So you don't have to cut little boards out. We can use full size sheets. For any of you with experience of lasers, you let me know what you think of this machine. And if you value this content at all, then please subscribe, like this video, and leave me a comment of which I will get back to you on. And remember, I've put a whole load of information and links in the description. Now, can I encourage you to stop watching YouTube by working diligently with your hands, forge for yourselves a life that is worth living. And if not, can I recommend one of these videos? If you like lasers, I've got a lot more coming soon. So, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.